Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel, Nintendo Collecting 101, bringing you collecting tip number 59, this one's called YouTube, or how to make videos. Now you're a collector, why is this important? Shooting a video isn't really a collecting tip. Well, I argue that it is, it's part of organization, it's part of giving back to the collecting community, and it's part of sharing your stuff with your family, your friends, and other collectors. Shooting videos is also a great way for other people to get into contact with me or comment on my video to ask questions. And also, almost every day, due to my channel's success, I get comments or messages from people saying, hey, this item that you want on eBay is up right now for a good deal. Or, look on Kijiji in this town, this item just came up. Or, this game's coming out as an exclusive to this store, you might not have known about it. So they're keeping me up to date based on my videos, which has been excellent. So I think making videos is a great way to keep track of your collecting, to network, and to be updated from other people even, because eventually they'll let you know. So when you're shooting a video, it's a good idea to get a camera that, even, that can either do 720p or 1080. Just because right now, if you try and use your iPhone, it might be good enough quality, but you might want to reconsider and get one that's actually for it. So I have an HD camera and I use that for shooting my videos. Additionally, you want to decide, is, is your video going to be stationary or are you going to walk around like I'm doing and I'm using a very steady hand? I'm going to annoy you for a second. I'm shooting a video and I'm walking around like this. That is horribly annoying. It's really bad when it's shaky, so I try now to have all my videos pretty stationary. And for that reason, I actually obtained a tripod so this is the tripod I use. Your camera usually just screws into the top of it there. It's not that big. It can extend and it was only maybe $25 to $30. So I do suggest getting one of those to decide if, how you're going to shoot your video. Next, when you're actually doing a video, you might think, why would I do a video of Super Mario Bros. 3? Everyone and their grandma has done a video of it. What more can I say? Well, you might not be saying much new information. But you want to let your personality come through in the videos, and you want to be entertaining or informative. Have you ever watched a video? I've watched a few of my own. Boring. The narrator just kind of talks like this the whole time about this awesome Gundam Char GameCube. You can't even hear me. I'm mumbling. I don't really sound enthusiastic. If you enjoy what you're doing and talking about, let it come through in your voice. Be enthusiastic and energetic. It's a lot better to listen to it. And actually, if you ever watch people talking about movies during reviews, they're almost always smiling and they're into it and interested. So that's one of my main tips for people shooting videos. Sound awesome, sound interested, sound enthusiastic. It helps a lot. Don't have shaky cam either. I'm, I'm a, I've done that a few times myself. Next, the content of your videos, obviously. You want to make sure you know what you're talking about, so you might need to do research on the item. You want to get your facts straight, or else the comments will sound off, or if people hear something that's inaccurate in the first 30 seconds, they'll probably just dislike the video and never watch anything from you again. If you can have something unique, like I posted a video of 64 Nintendo 64 controllers, it's not in HD, but it's doing pretty well, it is ridiculous, it's something hilarious, and it's something that the gaming community and collecting community kind of appreciated. So try and come up with some niche stuff in a niche market. You may have an idol that shoots videos that you really want to do. I love FinGamer, a lot of my videos are like FinGamer. And I'm just trying to be my own person, though, and a lot of people are actually like, hey, you should check out FinGamer. You'd probably like him. I do like him. He's awesome. He makes great videos. So I do talk about my idols because then other people don't just say you're ripping them off. I'm kind of doing it in a similar way, but I kind of like having this awesome room dedicated strictly to Nintendo and not to everything. Okay, so now you're actually shooting a video. Lighting is very important as well. I don't have the best lighting in the basement. I do have... Watch your eyes for a second. I have a lamp down here and a few extra lights just because the lighting down here is not the best. So you want to have the equipment, you want to have good lighting, you want to do your research, you want to speak clearly, you want to be enthusiastic, and then after you're done your video, the most important thing I can suggest for anyone to do is watch your own video. If you can't sit through your own eight minute video or seven minute video and you can't stand it and you don't even like it and you wouldn't even like it on YouTube, don't publish it. Normally when I shoot a video, I don't do it just in one take. I mean, it all is one take because I don't like the editing process, and I'll get to that in a second. 
But this is usually the third or fourth time I shoot the video that it's the best. Beyond that, I'm not sure if I'm getting better, I'm probably getting worse. So this is actually the fourth time I've shot this video because I misspeak or I just don't like it when I go watch it. So watch your video after you shoot them. You might want to consider doing editing in your videos. I know how to do it. I'm not good at it. It takes a very long time to edit videos. And I'm a busy guy. I'm doing a heck of a lot of stuff outside of this room, outside of collecting. So I try and do them in one-shot takes because... I'm okay at them, I think. I'm getting better, and that's what I enjoy doing, and it's very timely. So after you're done the video, you like the video, you want to put it up on YouTube. For uploading, I have some suggestions. When I try and upload a video in my home, it can take up to three hours to go up onto YouTube. We don't have the best internet. If I try and upload a video, though, at school, it uploads in five minutes. So you might want to see if your school or a coffee shop locally or a friend's house or a grandma's place or something uploads your videos in minutes because it just saves me a headache and it goes up really quick and it just saves time, especially on your computer too. You want to name the video something interesting, but you want it to be correct. You don't want people clicking on the name of the video and it's nothing to do with what's the content. So you want to pick a name of your video that's interesting and that people can actually relate to and they know what they're getting, but also that captivates their attention like 64 Nintendo 64 controllers. You want to probably annotate the video if you have any mistakes or errors. You would want to, I think, leave comments so that other people can connect with the video. And I like leaving the option on for people to actually vote on the video and to put a thumbs up. Because seriously, when I look at a video, what's the first thing you look at when you look at a video? I look at the thumbs. I look at how many up thumbs and down thumbs it has. So feel free, if you like this video, to give it an up thumb. Hopefully you appreciate these tips for taking videos and you take them to heart when you try and do your own. Feel free to shoot your first video if you haven't already and post it as a comment or as a response rather to this video. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, and obviously hit the subscribe button if you like my videos. Have a great day everyone and talk to you later.